here's a little bunch of four things which um, I acquired from a friend who I often exchange things with. Um, and they're very nice ones. I mean, I've never actually got one of these Hanayama puzzles that's called Hexagon. And it's, it's a sliding puzzle. It's quite tricky, actually. I was playing with it last night. I managed to get it apart. But all the pieces move around. It's very well made. Hanayama stuff is lasting a long, long time. So I'm going to have a go at trying to master that and make note of the positions and so on. Um, here's something that's much more mysterious. And it's, uh, it's actually, a, well, as you can see, it's a corkscrew. But it's got a very nice feature to it. The bottom bit down there, of course, lifts the caps or bottles. So we've got a, a tear bottle, and that's going to go like that, and it'll lift it up, which is fair enough. The corkscrew is a bit clever, though, because it has to be trapped. It's got a sharp end. And what we do is unscrew there, and then it lifts out like that. And now that's ready to be used with a handle, well, a one-sided handle into a corkscrew. But it fits that funny shape thing. It's typical of things that you want to be able to put on your belt. You don't put them on a keychain or anything like that. That, that shape there is perfect for people to put on the, the belt sporting their trousers. So a nice one, that. Then there's a Watsit. I love Watsits, and this chap is particularly good at providing me with Watsits. What on earth is this for? I'll lift the lid in a minute, show the interior. There's wheels at the bottom. So there's a gear wheel there. There's something going on inside. When that turns, I don't know whether you can see, there's blades there. Going to yes, well, there's blades turning. But I'll make it clearer by lifting the lid. And that's what you have to do to actually operate the thing. Which says it's going to open. Oops. There we are. I'll see if you can get that into focus. So that goes that way there, and those little knives go round and they go through little slots at the bottom. So the question is, what's it chopping? What's it used for? And I did have a good clue last night when I was having a really good think about it. So I'll leave it open to you to think about, uh, and perhaps you can um, come up with some ideas, and I'll tell you what my thought is. on. But what's nice about this stuff is you, he gets it from recycling stuff, and of course there's never any boxes, there's no instructions. You have to work out yourself what was that designed for when there's no instructions and there's no title for it. So it's probably a very useful item, I suspect, but um, something I hadn't seen before. And the star of the show was an amazing piece of... Look at this, it's got a handle there which turns, and this side here, oh my gosh, look at this. It's Swiss made. So I get that to focus. It's got a, log a logarithmic scale on it, which is the interesting part. And the inside goes against the outside. There's, there's a little line up of arrows there. And this thing here is a cursor. And my feeling is it's most likely to be a circular slide rule. So although it's only a foot in diameter, it actually represents a linear slide rule about three foot long, if you can imagine that, which is very difficult to carry around. One of my friends in Amsterdam who's got a collection of these, I must show it to him or get a picture of it to show it to him and identify it properly. But you turn the handle at the back like that, and that has the effect of turning it in a wheel. You line the pieces up, you get the cursor to line up, and somehow you manage to multiply 365 by 271 and read the answer. That's something like that. I, I used a linear slide rule myself at college for many, many years, but this is a wonderful very old one, probably about 50, 60, 70 years old, made from Switzerland, and I think it's a circular slide rule. What, what do you think? <laughs>